We start today this Campus Connect in GD Goenka University. And thank you for that applause, first of all. I'll ask you to do that one more time when I introduce the guest. Today's a very special show. First, we introduce guest, Shavi Mishra from the School of Planning and Architecture. Sanjay Rajora, Vikramjeet Singh, Neeti Palta. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your generous applause. Today we talk about comedy. Today we talk about humor. Today we talk about satire. Do Indians really know how to laugh at themselves? Do we have a sense of humor? Have we lost it? Is it still there somewhere? Uh, do constrictions and societal restrictions restrict us from laughing at ourselves? Why do politicians get angry when there is a satire about them? Why do Indians or oh, this is the perceived notion. I want to break some myths today. I'd like to start with Neeti Palta. Neeti Palta, as a comedian who does stand up for a living, uh, do you think that times have changed in India? That uh, when you started out doing comedy, do you think audiences have changed? Is there space for the kind of comedy you would like, you and I would like in India? I think comedy is still nascent in India, but it is definitely growing. Earlier, you were competing with beer and chicken tikka for people's attention at pubs. Now people are like, Acha, comedy chal rahi hai. Chalo, sun lete hai. But um, we have a long way to go yet. We have a long way to go. Vikram ji, you started fairly recently, I right, guess. Right. Uh, do you think that more and more media, more and more activism, uh, satire, political satire, do you think it's still in its nascent stages, like Neeti said? Do you think there is no space for independent comedians who have a brain to go do what they do? No, no, of course there is a space. But I think one thing we miss when you say India is that there is no one India. Which is, you know, there's a very urban niche India, there is a Masi India that stays in the rural areas. So when you say satire, political satire, it actually comes from a very real space. So I hardly expect, you know, somebody in a posh Delhi Ilaka to really relate to that. And maybe they'll laugh at it. But for a guy in Kashipur or a hinter or a rural hinterland, he will laugh at it, but he also knows it's coming from a real place. Sanjay, you do a lot of comedy. You've done comedy outside India as well. If you look at this crowd today, would you be comfortable just going in and doing your material in front of them, knowing that they have uh, that capacity to understand, they'll, they'll understand where you're coming from, where that comedian or that satirist in you is coming from? Your earlier question, whether there is a space for political satire or not, it's, it's, a, it's a very important question because it's like, the comics who perform in urban spaces are also part of the society which will always push the political satire away. You know, I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you have a joke right now, because you're a comedian, let's test this audience out right now. They're fresh, they don't know you. I mean, they don't know what the comedy is. Let's try a joke out of them. Let's see without any coaching whether they laugh, how much they laugh or not. Here you go. This is a test for you as well. Go. Recently, I was performing this show, Asitasi Democracy, and I, it was on Father's Day. Called Asitasi Democracy. Yeah. That's funny in itself, <laughs> I guess. Yes, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so it, it was on Father's Day and uh, you know, since morning I was fed up with these stupid Facebook messages, had the best lunch with the best dad in the world, had the <laughs> greatest uh, dinner with the greatest dad in the world, So, and I got so pissed off. So eventually I said that, Sabka dad is so great, so who is this dad? Hai? <laughs> and no, I, I mean, see, this is a response. I didn't coach them. They, they find it funny. You know, I'll come to you in just a bit. Neeti, I'm coming to you. I have questions for you. Now, the kind of comedy that you do, I know you do a lot of uh, stereotypes. I know you do a lot of uh, uh, women jokes because you are a woman. So you have that liberty. Do you think the crowds respond to it as much? Do, do they still feel conscious about uh, who is this woman on stage? What is she talking about? What are you These are two guys who are talking and one guy is talking about this other girl to the other guy and he's like, Lely. <laughs> I'm like, kya? I didn't even re realize we had started takeaway service. <laughs> so when I said this on stage, I could see the older audiences going, I'm like, kya? I didn't even re realize we had started takeaway service. <laughs> so when I said this on stage, I could see the older audiences going, oh, kya bol rahe hai? <laughs> Whereas the young audiences were applauding, so that's the difference. Is, the do you think, do you think, why, by voice vote, do you think uh, some elderly people or some people with perhaps a different mindset than you can still get offended at, at something that we use every day? What she said right now is a very common usage. Girls, boys, everyone, right? Do you think it still exists that older people will go, oh my God, yes or no? Yes. 
Vikram ji, do you also face that? I mean, you're not a woman, clearly. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not. Clearly, but, but you also have uh, uh, your, your own uh, uh, challenges there, I'm guessing. You can say it out loud. You mean I'm a Sardar and I I did not say yeah? that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, but no. I, I, know, I know where you're coming from. <laughs> no, I, I didn't say that. You know, but you know, people, people say Sardars are the only funny people left in India. Is that true? I think more than funny, uh, what you hear uh, all around you is that we're probably one of the rare communities to laugh at ourselves, you know. Like I'll give you an example. I, I'm talking about how things happen at home. The first time I heard a Sardar joke at school or something and I spoke to my parents, he like, listen, how the hell are they just joking on us? And they're like, it's cool, man, we can laugh at ourselves. I'm, this, that is not an exaggeration, you know. So that is one thing you know very early in life, that it's okay to laugh at yourself. And uh, although we're not the only ones, you see a lot of Biharis who do that, you see a lot of other communities who do that. But is it, a, is it a very community-wise thing? Is, has comedy and humor been reduced to a co community-wise thing? That if you're a particular community, you're pro probably funny, you'll take oh, a joke. More than that, I think it's become a coping, me coping mechanism because uh, you talk of Sardars or you talk of Biharis like I did and all. They've all faced a lot of adversities in a way, like when you go back in history and everything. So I think it comes from there that, you know, it beca I've heard stories of, you know, partition camps and refugee camps where humor is what got people through. So it becomes deeper than that. It's actually a coping mechanism and you have that in India a lot. Uh, do you think ethnic humor is a, is a big part of Indian humor these days? I'm, Absolutely. I know Sanjay does uh, a lot of it, I'm, I'm yeah. assuming. But do you think ethnic humor is a big part of it? Absolutely. Uh, give us an example of an ethnic joke which, can, which, you know, which shouldn't be offensive. Everyone can laugh. Give us an example. No, so uh, not a joke really. It's no, like whatever, yes. I, I do this bit of uh, how I go out shopping and there's a northeastern attendant who's attending to me. And you know, I sort of talk in her accent and uh, how my accent correlates with that. And you know, do that? How, how that, how that late lets me, helps me not pick the right clothes. You know? <laughs> how, how does that happen? So, so it's like, you know, I'm, I'm, picking, I'm picking a line of clothes and this woman just stands next to me and she's like, yes, sir, how can I help you? And all that, you know? <laughs> now, what I want to point out here is that it's somewhat dismiss it as being racist. For me, it's just, okay, that's another community that I don't interact with on an everyday basis. Or don't know much about. Exactly. So I'm reacting more from that point of view. More than, you know, uh, dismissing it, it's just a difference between us and them. And because you have 20,000 communities in India, those are more pronounced. And uh, I think it's just an awareness of people, how can, they can be different. And humor is a way of just tackling those. Well, Sanjay, you know, you performed abroad as well. I, I know that for a fact. You, were you performed in, in, in countries like Pakistan, in Sark countries as well. How is the audience there? I mean, we understand that India is a democracy. It's a better democracy than most democracies. We do have our challenges, but it's still a democracy to some extent. Do you think audiences in other countries are more responsive? Perhaps they're evolved more towards humor? I'll, How have you found them? I'll answer your first question first. <clears throat> as India being a successful democracy, I think my friend uh, Varun Grover gave a very good example of this by giving an example of Schrodinger's cat. All of you who study physics here would understand what Schrodinger cat is. So it's like democracy is like Schrodinger's cat in this country. You know it's there, but whenever you try and go and find it, find it. You, you can't find it, right. right? So it's only for a particular section of society that democracy exists. Second, so who, one second, one second. Very, very important point. Who agrees with that? One second, let's do a voice vote. Who agrees with what Sanjay just said right now? Democracy exists only for a particular section of Indians. Yes or no? no. Yes. Yes. The no's will go first. No? no. Yes? yes? I think the yeses are winning. The eyes have it. Yes, go ahead. And as far as audience uh, in other countries, like for example in, in Pakistan, I found them uh, far more politically aware and far uh, uh, receptive uh, to, uh, to making fun of themselves and like if I talk about uh, like Balochistan insurgency in Pakistan or if I talk about the Khyber insurgency, they know their stuff and they, they, they laugh at it. But that's because the satire has always had a tradition of coming out of a society which is going through a strife. Right? So whenever there is strife, art always prospers because that is the only way they can protest. So I found them more open, more politically aware and more receptive than is the audience. similarity? I mean, we have Sardar jokes, we have Jat jokes, we have Bihari jokes, they have Pathan, Pathan jokes, jokes, they have Baloch jokes. Yeah. Give us an example. I'm sure the audience will love it. Give us a Pathan joke. No, this is very funny because uh, I was performing in Karachi once and the uh, audience was very supportive and they laughed very much. One person was offended. Yeah. <laughs> and she, she was a woman. She came out of the audience and she started talking to me. How can you talk about uh, stuff like this? And she was an Indian. 
in Pakistan. He managed to get the one heckler who was an Indian. Yes, go ahead. Married to a Pakistani. So yeah, indeed, they have Balo jokes, they have uh, uh, Pathan jokes. In fact, it happened to me when I went to Karachi, I, I was supposed to go to my police verification. And this DSP is a, is a Baloch. Uh, his name is some Liagat Ali Khan Baloch. So because the cops were harassing me over there, so I thought at least there is a Baloch here. We'll have some sympathy for Indians because we are supposedly providing them logistic and moralistic support to BLA. Right? Logistic and moralistic support. Supposedly. So, supposedly. Supposedly. So I thought he may be sympathetic to me. And then so I entered his room and he says, What uh, is cost? Kya hai? Oh, is, that, is that post or cost? <laughs> कोस्ट क्या तो जन आई स्टार्टेड कैलकुलेटिंग माय एड ये गांव में इतनी जमीन है घर में इतनी प्रॉपर्टी है एंड देन ही सेज अगेन कि कोस्ट क्या है तुम्हारे तुम्हारे फादर की कोस्ट क्या है मैंने कहा यार वो तो मेरी माय बता सकती है सब जाता उसी एंड ही एक्चुअली ही एक्चुअली मैंने कि तुम्हारी कास्ट क्या है ओ एंड देन आई सेड कि मैं जाट हूं तो तुम जाट नहीं तुम्हारा एक्सेंट जाट वाला तो है नहीं मैंने जाटों का कब से एक्सेंट होने लगा so you you can create situations they are always there to laugh and you know before i go back to the audience have you want to come to you do you, you see these are all unrehearsed comedians right now we didn't coach these people yes i prepped them for a bit but not for this purpose do you think that uh, this particular uh, i mean i've only talked about the generation but do you think indians as uh, an audience not just particularly or or uh, specifically a comedy audience just an audience per se anything's happening on stage do you think we evolved as an audience and i'm talking about films i'm talking about uh, books i'm talking about generally how we perceive art and culture well i think uh, we've evolved in some ways in technology and all of that that sense of the term but in many ways we become more guarded and we become more possessive and we become more political and we become more careful what do you mean by guarded guarded about because you never know now that the media is more active i never know i shouldn't be saying something wrong here because i don't know what it will be construed as so people have become more careful and it's we live in a very uh, different society now even in is I'm, that natural is that necessarily healthy for us as a democracy as a nation i i don't think so you don't think so right I don't you think, think so. you think the the, the restriction and, and the guardedness that chavi talked about uh, can necessarily be good or bad for the country who who thinks if we if we evolve into a, a very watched society a very close circuit television camera society do you think it's good good for the democracy or go bad for the democracy bad right uh, i want to come to you now and participation from the audience remember you know on campus connect is crucial uh, let me come to you let me ask you a very simple question have you been to a comedy show before no. never no. Uh, do, would you would you go to a comedy show that promised maybe offensive humor maybe you know risque humor would you would you explore that i would you would I so would. there is space for that Absolutely. do you think any of these people are funny Uh, I found this. She Sardar took her time. She yeah. took her time. She thought about it. <laughs> They're right there. <laughs> They're right there. I found the Sardar gentleman very funny. Okay. Okay. By the way, I did watch. She doesn't remember my name. She knows me as the Sardar gentleman. Uh, what does that mean now? <laughs> what does Sardar that mean too. now? So what does that mean now? <laughs> Let her finish. Let her come back. Go. I watched the vagina monologues, and I thought that was brilliant. I don't know. You if thought you've that was funny? It. Yeah. I thought it was brilliant. Okay. I haven't seen it. So no comments. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but no. What's your name? Aman. Uh, on the mic. Aman. Aman. Thank you, Aman. Anyone else who has been to a comedy show? Yes, I'll come to you in a bit. Don't think you can escape, but not right now. Who else wants the mic right now? Yes. Where's Where's Shu? Shu, I'm coming to you right now. Don't shoo me away. <laughs> Shu, do you think that uh, comedy has a future in India? I think it has. Why? Because. the amount of humor that is present in today's society will not finish or vanish away in the future so people like arman is so people like him only would be a better comedian or something like that you know i, I keep hearing <laughs> arman is funny he hasn't told us a joke yet arman i'm coming to you you're on the line my friend no no i'm coming to you you cannot escape go ahead you yeah like <laughs> it's not basic the fact that you should have a good sense of humor then only you can be a comedian you should like the people say that sadars laugh on their themselves it's a good point not a bad point so actually you i think, think more people should learn to laugh at themselves especially politicians in our country yeah because they are funny who's the funniest politician you know lalu prasad yadav lalu, everyone everyone loves lalu prasad yadav you know i used to be a big fan of lalu prasad yadav only because he would say things that you wouldn't expect does this encourage you tremendously <laughs> it tells me i have a brighter future
Sanjay, actually, frankly speaking, I was uh, it was a win-win situation for me in some sense because I really hate radio jockeys. So I really wanted. <laughs> one second, one second. I can't let that go. <laughs> who, who else is with Sanjay? Who hates radio jockeys? I love the radio. Trust me, I hate radio jockeys too. I'll tell you why. When I when I'm driving, I want my song to play. Not some, not some, not some. Yes, you agree with me. Why do you agree with me? No, this one. What's um, your name? Shreya. Uh, I just hate uh, radio jockeys because uh, it's for the simple reason I go out, I sit in the car, I prefer music to play and then they start with their nuisance and they talk about nothing and at the end of the day I feel what are they talking even? They're just dragging things and you know, talking uselessly. So I just really want them to stop and to play the music. Okay, there's a message for all radio jockeys, especially two or three of them who man the English radio stations. I want my songs when I drive. Please don't talk so much. Uh, Sanjay, I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, she's, she's absolutely right. You know what? Uh, sometimes they come up with such stupid things that you... You think that there's a gene in evolution. You know, aap sab log, the, all these are young students. And, you know, there was this song called Ibn Battuta Bagal Bajuta. Yeah. And all of us know that Ibn Battuta was a Moroccan traveler yeah. who came to India. And this radio jockey says, This song is great, but what is Ibn Battuta? <laughs> and then they come up with... Read a book like, for God's sake, right? <laughs> Coming back to your point about tolerance, like, uh, you know, uh, we, as was pointed out earlier, we are racist, we are intolerant, we don't have a sense of humor we used to have. And as you said that India is moving forward, I believe hopefully. we have... I said hopefully. Yeah, I believe we have taken a U-turn and moving forward in the other direction. Right? That, that's what is happening in this country. Like, I was coming from uh, Meharoli to this place. I started as a different man and I ended up as a different person here. <laughs> you aged overnight, I think, in yeah, a couple of hours. It's so far and... Uh, Look, look at this, I mean, where does the city end? Where does the village start? This is not development. This is like playing with the environment, playing with the lives of people. No, on a specific point, Vikramjit, you know, politicians, I, I, wanna, I keep harping on politicians because I interact with them on a daily basis. Right. A sympathy clap for me, please. <laughs> Vikramjit, I talk about politicians a lot because they shape our future, they shape our policies, they impact a lot of things in our country. Right. Do you think that they need to move away from the silly stuff and perhaps laugh when there are silly jokes, you know, move away from the silly stuff that they keep going on and on about, worry about the serious stuff. If someone uh, doesn't like your views, if someone, you know, is satirical towards you, learn to take it. Do you think that's important? Of course it is. But it, I, will it happen? Sorry? Will it happen? See, uh, I, I think in an ideal scenario it will. But it won't because, uh, you know, how it works is when people have a lot to lose, when there's a lot at stake, then of course all that attitude of taking yourself too seriously comes in. So I think that is what is happening with politicians. But, but you know, like you just said, I would rather have them focus on the issues, like the ones that Sanjay was pointing out. Like, for God's sake, don't laugh at yourselves, don't laugh at our jokes, but take care of those issues. So that is what I would want the politicians to do for a I start. Think, I think just the... What I believe is that people who are not able to take jokes on themselves, who are not able to laugh at themselves, are scoundrels. And we all know that politics, <laughs> politics is a refuge for scoundrels. There goes your answer. Okay, people who can't laugh at themselves, they're scoundrels, that could be a little harsh, but then, of course, I, I, I believe his, his, uh, his nickname is the Angry Jat in the circle, right? Is that true? You told me that. Yeah. All right, I think that fits perfectly. Niti Palta, before I come to Chavi, I want to come to you very quickly. Uh, We've talked about politicians not really responding to humor and not really taking it lightly. Do you think, uh, uh, like someone mentioned radio, radio jockeys right now, they also think they're funny. They think so. Yeah. Uh, it's their brand of humor. Some people think they can go crash. I mean, I think someone has heard about, I keep hearing this man called Bawa. Okay, I don't, I don't really want to pick on radio jockeys. I have nothing against you, my friend. But the point is, many people think you're utter... Well, you're questionable. The, the humor is questionable. Do you th I mean, I don't want to go on and on about radio jockeys, but everyone thinks they have a brand of humor. Do you think somewhere we need to uh, draw a line? Uh, you know, put down comedy, stand-up comedy is all good. But there's a line that some people tend to cross, and that is why other people like you have to suffer when you come up with better content, but you're not be able to do that. To a large extent, I also think it's a kind of a personal line because what might be funny to me... And that is why other people like you have to suffer when you come up with better content, but you're not be able to do that. To a large extent, I also think it's a kind of a personal line because what might be funny to me might be offensive to you. But, um, okay, being a woman, I find rape jokes unfunny. Hmm. You know, I... So there are rape jokes? Yeah, there Did are you know rape that? jokes. 
No, I, I, I would totally agree with that. Rape jokes are not that you have a chutkla bana rahe ko. You know, people write Facebook updates that uh, uh, Germany ne Brazil ka rape kar diya. But that's, that's what I'm talking about. You know, this parlance that we know these days. We use rape as a word, especially guys, especially men use this word rape. That makes you uncomfortable. You know, does that mean that we are crossing the line there? Is that the line? I don't, I don't know if I can, I can be the one pointing out where the line is at. You know, well, it, you can try. It, you know, um, see, I think comedy emerged uh, from a school of being a jester, from being the only person in a king's court who could tell the truth. And sometimes that's how a bitter pill used to be handed to the king. So pushing limits is actually a natural form of comedy. So when you come to drawing lines and limits to it, it is it'll have to be a personal so is choice. Is it self-regulation? Is it self-regulation? Is that the only way? It'll have to be self-regulation because I might want to tell well, a politician she talked he's about, corrupt. She talked about some lines being crossed and there is of course a cultural milieu to it, a cultural context. I know you have thoughts on culture and Indian culture, but hold your thoughts for a bit. I'll Shall tell we? you where yeah. the line can be. If you question the purpose of the joke, if you question the origin, like why am I saying what I'm saying? If the reason is wrong, then the joke is wrong. To me, that is the line. Okay. Do you believe, Niti, very quickly though, because I don't have much time, most of humor, stand-up humor or Indian stand-up humor is pick on you humor or put down humor? No, not really. No, not at all? No. But those are the jokes that really work. Well, stereotypes work in India purely because we are just so culturally rich and diverse. You know, you say Punjabis, everybody start laughing already. He walks onto stage, people expect him to be funny just because he's a Siddhar. Yeah. So that exists in India, but I say you should be proud of where you come from. If you're a Bihari, that's what makes you your individual person. In a group full of Delhiites, you're the Bihari. That should be your identity, not your shame. Absolutely. I think that deserves a big round of applause. That's a very good point. Who else? Who else? You have a hand here. You have a hand here. I saw some hands here. Where are the hands that I saw? Who said? Yes. People here, you, you want to say something? Why don't you want to say something? You, you picked up your, yeah, yeah you, you put up your hand, yes, go ahead. What's your name? Hope, my name is Acha. Go ahead. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen this, but have you seen the show Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yes. Yeah, so that show, like, the jokes are crude, but they're like subtle, which is what makes it funny. Crude and subtle, that's I the mean, first time I've heard the two I mean, the same like <laughs> Give me an example of a crude and subtle joke. I wish I could. You mean rough, but raw jokes? Raw jokes. Yeah, not like prepared. really raw jokes. Yeah. And it, it's funny because they're making those jokes on each other, you know? And they learn to laugh it off. And I think that the whole um, thing about people not laughing it off here stems from like insecurities and stuff. But if we could move past that, I think it would really take like a whole other level here. Because like, uh, like ma'am just said, there's so much diversity and you know there's so many rich cultures here so turn that into the advantage advantage rather exactly. than the disadvantage and rather than the weakness to you you're very late my friend you're killing me on time but since you are putting up your hand i'll come to you what's your name my name is arnav sir uh, what i want arnav to talk arnav a r n a v who okay <clears throat> so uh, yes, what i'm talking go ahead, about is, arnav. Uh, Sir, the only I want to talk about why politicians don't take um, all these jokes seriously. The way they are, the reason they don't take it seriously is because it, it's more like a platform for them to strengthen whatever cause they're supporting. I'm sorry I can't recall any incident right now, but I'm sure you could. So um, the more of a, they, they don't intend to discourage humor. It's all about whatever cause they're supporting, and if it uh, strengthens their cause in any way, promotes them as a politician, I'm sure they. Who leave. agrees with what the, my friend Arnav says? Hands, please. Over there, some people, not many people agree with you, but you have a point of view, I respect that. Come, give it to me. Yes, you want to say something? You put your hand up, you have some, some hands. Very quickly, I have to wrap up now. I have no more time. We kind of know about the classical comedies like Lauren and Hardy. That's but, physical comedy. Do we have physical comedy? The, the slapstick. Slapstick? Funny. It's, it's funny. It's slapstick way too funny. funny. Do, does slap, slapstick, one second. Does slapstick really work in India, Sanjay? Not for me, like Kapil Sharma is very popular, so it works for people, I guess. It works, it works. Kapil Sharma. The majority is loves it. Yeah, yeah. 20 seconds each, starting with you, Chavi. Uh, what's the future of comedy? We can't draw lines for comedians because that would be unfair to humorists everywhere. How do we balance it out? See, like, I would uh, like to conclude it. Like, there are so many different theories of uh, humor, also, like psychological theories. You know, they say human, uh, humor induced behavior is healthy. And then there are spiritual theories which says that humor is the gift of love. 
So I think we should work as a society, we should work towards somehow inducing humor into every aspect of our life, you know. Okay, fair enough. fair enough. No, I get it. Uh, Sanjay Rajora, I'll, let me come to you, your closing comment. Future of comedy, does this crowd give you some hope? Uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know them that much, but yeah, they are quite aware. And uh, I think that everybody should be allowed to say the lines they want to say, no matter how bad it is. And the comedian should be open to the reaction that he or she is getting. If he is bad, he would be told that you are you are really bad, right? If he is good, he is good. So there can be no line as so. Such. Let's leave it to the audience. Yeah. Let's, let's not let's not be judges or anything. And, and if anything can go, that means uh, audience is also evolving in some way because they are able to take jokes on themselves or the people and just it's it's a sign of evolution with okay. the audience, right? So, okay. There won't Vikram be any more Vikram shackles. Oh, uh, closing comments on this one. See, you spoke a lot about drawing lines. I think there is no way lines need to be drawn for stand-up purely because I think it is the only anti-establishment force you have left in the country. It's a resistive force that the country needs. Your cinema will not do that because it is owned by the studios. Your advertising will not do that because it is selling something. So this live stand-up comedy is the only thing that is unfiltered and you sort of need that as a force of resistance. Okay. Sanjay might resist illegal constructions, I might resist women taking selfies. It, it's, it's different. <laughs> but you need that. Okay, Mithi Palta, the closing comment on Campus Connect this time around uh, goes to Mithi Palta. Before she does that, just for the lack of it, let's have a huge round of applause for all our comedians. Just for the lack of it. <laughs> Mithi Palta, closing comments. I think take everything with a pinch of salt because every joke has a little bit of truth in it and it has an opinion to offer. And just kind of pay attention to what the person is saying and maybe you'll understand what the tattva of the whole thing is. All right, okay, I don't know what tattva is though. Essence. Essence. Well oh, done, guys. Bad, I'm a bad Indian. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not. That's all the time we have. Many thanks to, uh, and let's give a huge round of applause to Niti Palta, Vikramjit, Sanjay Rajura, and Chavi Mishra. That's all the time we have, but you were a great audience. Many thanks, Yuri Goenka, for having us. Let's have a huge one. That's all the time we have. At the end, we learn that we learn to laugh at ourselves. Indians, of course, do have a sense of humor. We just need to work a little more at it. My name is Attar Khan. Goodbye.